Hello there. Today we're going to do a guide for how to use a mortar calculator in Squad. So I have one guide out there for how to use the in-game markers to sort of replicate what the mortar calculator does and get accurate first round hits for the mortars. Um, that's kind of my pre preferred method. Uh, that's usually what I'm using like 99.5% of the time. So the circumstances where I would personally use the mortar calculator would just be on a maps with uh, big mountains where the difference in terrain elevation is going to throw off uh, what you can do with the in-game markers. Um, but another really common circumstance where the mortar calculator really comes in handy is if you're trying to use a mortar and you're not a squad leader and you can't set your own uh, in-game markers. When I'm running my mortar squad and I have some squad mates who have mortar calculator, um, it's super helpful. They can jump on the mortar. I can give them a Bravo Charlie fire team lead. They can set their own markers and they can deliver accurate rounds onto the target and they can be engaging a couple different targets at a time. Um, if I have some squad members who want to use the mortar and they don't have mortar calculator, um, usually it's just not even worth it to, to let them do that. I have to set attack markers for each target for them and the in-game attack markers are only accurate to within 49 meters, so they're probably going to be missing most of their shots most of the time. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to set up the mortar calculator. And there's different ways to do it. Um, some people do it on their phone or a second monitor. Uh, for now, I just have one monitor and I don't want to use my phone, so I'm going to use the Steam overlay. So to get there, you just do Shift-Tab to open that up. And then in this bottom uh, toolbar here, there is a button for web browser. And then if you're doing this for the first time, you're going to have to navigate to this website. And I'll uh, post the link in the description. It is squadmortar.rc.net. So when you first open it up, um, it might not look quite like this. Um, so the first thing we got to do is set up all these buttons on the left here. So there's a bunch of different options that you can explore on your own, but I'll just go through the ones that I have. So first of all, we have different um, maps. So I will go to the map I'm playing, Jensen's Test Range. And then over here, um, we have something for grid squares. I like having the grid squares on. And then we have our projectile types. So this is all the indirect uh, fire weapons in the game. So right now we'll start with a standard mortar. These two buttons down here are going to make it so that when I move this around, the uh, keypads pop up. Um, and then over here, it's just uh, turning this mortar on or off. In a minute, we'll set multiple mortars, and this allows us to select which one we want to use. Um, over here, you have a button that allows you to adjust the height in case um, something is on the building. So the mortar calculator is already taking into account the terrain height, um, but then if you're shooting onto the roof of the building, you can add some extra height, extra height here. I actually never use this. Um, the tallest building in the game, I think, is only 25 meters, which doesn't really throw off your shot too much. And then if you add a number in here to shoot the roof of some building, and then you switch targets and forget to delete it, which often can happen, it's going to throw off the rest of your shots. So that's what this does, but I, like I said, I never really use it. Down here, we have these two buttons. Um, just like these two up here, they add a, a keypad in grid reference when you're creating a target. Uh, and we'll show that in a minute what that looks like. Um, over here, if I double click to set a target, um, this button here is just adding the range. So in this case, 300 meters, um, which can be good to know. And this button here is just setting the font size. So I want to make it super big. <laughs> I could type in whatever. Um, right now, I just have uh, 15. There's another button here that adds the dispersion for the shot. Um, for the standard mortar, you don't really need that. Um, you just need to understand that the mortar is going to land somewhere in this area, not exactly where you're aiming it. Um, where this dispersion uh, marker really comes in handy is when you're using UB-32 rockets, where you can see the dispersion is huge. Um, and this can help you understand... You know, if you have a friendly here and you're shooting at the target here, you might think, you know, they're pretty far away, but actually they're in the uh, blast zone. So this is most useful for uh, weapons with huge dispersion uh, right now, mainly the UB-32 rockets and to a lesser extent the grad rockets. So for now, I'm just using a normal mortar. I can just shut that off. Um, this button over here, if I click on it, it'll allow me to delete these markers. 
the single click, and then I'm going to want to turn that off so I can uh, reset more markers later. These two buttons here let me set a new mortar, so I can actually set a bunch of those. And then I can use this menu up here to turn on which one will actually give me uh, the range to target. If I turn on all of them at once, it becomes super cluttered because now my target is going to have a range from each one of these mortars attached to it. So I don't really want that. So usually I just want one at a time, so I have just one range. So I'll delete all these extra mortars that I don't need. All right, and now it's time to set up uh, where we want our mortar to be. So if we go back to the game, uh, we're going to have to find our location on the in-game map and then uh, go over to the mortar calculator and do that same spot. Um, so a little tip here on sort of featureless maps where there is you know, huge deserts and everything looks the same. Um, you can set up your mortar sort of at the intersection of grids here to try to get uh, the exact location. Otherwise, um, it's nice to be next to sort of a recognizable building and then it makes it easy to find your location in the mortar calculator. So right now I can just hover over my mouse here and if I'm doing in the middle of a grid square here I have kind of four different grid references to choose from. I just want to pick one and sort of memorize it. So here it's going to be G697. And usually so I don't forget uh, switching in between screens I'll just repeat that to myself. So G697, G697, G697. So you can see as I drag around the mortar thing um, I'm getting the grid references. So G69 and then 7 over here. And I was uh, using sort of the upper left reference here, but I was actually right on this uh, grid reference. So again, um, my other option would be to just uh, try to memorize exactly where it is within the grid. So maybe if I was in uh, G695, not on the cross here, I just kind of put it maybe in the middle or in the upper left. I just have to sort of remember. Or alternatively, if I was in like this little bunker or something, I could know to put it right there. But in this case, I'm right on this cross here, so I know exactly where I'm going to be. So again, we can delete targets using this uh, little negative I button. And then if we have the T selected, we can double click. Oops, I did not have T selected. I need to delete this again. If I have T selected and the I turned off, I can double click to set my marker. So right now we're going to uh, pick a target somewhere over here. And then this top number here is going to be uh, my range in mortar mills. So 623.4. Um, I have the range of meters, 767, and then this 52.7 is going to be how much I need to rotate. So if you look at your compass on the bottom here, 52.7 um, is going to align you with a target. Now normally, um, if I'm a squad leader and using this, I would just set an attack marker and not use the compass on the bottom at all. Um, and if someone in my squad was on the mortar, I'd give them fire team leaders so they can... Uh, just align with our Bravo or Charlie fire team arc. I'm setting lots of targets all over the place. I want to be able to sort of rotate quickly without having to read off that extra uh, coordinate for the compass every time. Um, so normally I'm not really not really using that. So I got a drone up to help uh, spot the shots here. A little target range set up. And I'll try to hit uh, this radio sitting over here. So uh, looking on the map. I could use the grid reference, but usually I'm just looking at uh, the on-map stuff to try to um, match up my target on the mortar calculator. So here I got this little helipad, and here I have this little area, and I can select this little helipad. Otherwise, if it's just randomly in the desert, I could uh, just drag my target around. I see these little keypads popping up, and then um, within, within the keypad, I just have to remember, you know, is it in upper left or bo uh, bottom left, you know, maybe in the middle. Um, but normally people are, you know, around some map feature that I can just visually uh, see. In this case, the middle of this helipad. Make sure I got the right weapon, standard mortar. Make sure I've got uh, my mortar in the right position. I do. And then I can just read off this uh, top line here, 1263 for my range. And if uh, maybe I was in a squad and my squad leader refused to give me FTL or something, maybe somebody else needed FTL, I could use this 52.7 down here to uh, align align the target on the compass. But since I have an attack marker, I don't need that. Just do it. get on my mortar here and shoot that range, which was 1263. So I just set it to 1263. Fire a few rounds. Now 
if I'm using uh, a drone here, I can fire about six. And I have enough time to switch off before the first one lands. If I shoot nine, the first one will land pretty much just as I switch off. You see the impact of the shots here. You notice it's not uh, dropping directly on top of it, but instead a circle around it. So we switch back to the mortar calculator. We click the uh, dispersion ring. We can see that that's just the natural uh, spread of the shot, but we're actually, you know, on target. Rounds are actually landing in a circle around it. So, you know, without anyone uh, spotting for us, um, this is letting us get pretty much on target with the first volley. So now uh, we'll switch over to our UB32 rocket pod and we'll just check that out. So for non-standard mortars, we're going to get the little drop down here. We'll select our UB32 rockets. Um, we see with our dispersion meter here that it's actually going to hit a huge area here, which is fine. And then instead of a four-digit number in mils, we have this uh, degrees here. And it also gives us a flight time for this round 3.3 seconds, um, which is cool to know, but it, it doesn't really uh, relevant most of the time. But anyway, our uh, elevation is going to be 5.7 degrees. So uh, we just align with our attack marker to the elevation here. And we'll fire a volley. Normally I just fire all the rockets, but since I switch over to the drone here, I got to uh, fire just a few. And you can see you know, it's spreading out over this big area here, but we still were able to get rounds on target. So I'm just fire a few more. Switch over again. And bam. You know, obviously it's not a precision fire weapon, but we're landing as close to the target as we possibly could. So, for this next part, we're going to take a look at firing on targets on rooftops. Um, so normally you don't actually know how tall the rooftop is in game, but if you have a drone here, you can use the altimeter to measure it. Um, so as I was parked on the ground, I'd be at an altitude of zero. I can just go up level with the top of the roof here and check my altitude. So right around seven meters. Um, this two-story here is probably like an average height for a building in the game. And the tallest building in the game that I know about is like a seven-story apartment building on Basra, which I measured once at uh, 25 meters. So normally you're just not uh, you know, knowing how tall the building is, but you know somewhere between seven meters for a two-story and 25 meters for a seven-story. Um, I guess the very, very tallest building is the uh, construction crane on some maps, but uh, I have no idea how tall that one is. Um, so here we'll just mark this radio on the top of the roof. We can go over to our mortar calculator, select that. And then now we can use, uh, if we wanted to, this function over here to put in the height of the building. So I measured it at 7 meters. Um, like I said, normally you can't uh, easily measure it, so you just have to guess. Um, and we can see that that changes the, the uh, range of the shot. So here I was shooting at, um, at 0 meters, 1253 mils, and now it's 1254. So it's only changing it by one mil, and you can see this blue circle. The dispersion on my shot is actually much bigger, much bigger than that di uh, difference in range. Actually, I think I have two targets here. Let me delete one. So yeah, um, even just shooting from one side of the building to the other, um, it's changing up to four mils. Whereas, you know, whether or not whether or not I have this height typed in, it's only changing it by one. Um, and even if I had a super tall building, a super tall apartment building. Um, it's still not changing it by that much. So just, um, you know, the range of the target itself is varying by four, but the range of the target based on the height of the building is only, uh, is only four itself. Um, so I really don't, um, don't need to uh, know the height of the building or put that in. Um, what I can do is just add, you know, a little bit of extra range. I know my target is on a rooftop. You know, maybe, um, you know, my range without anything was 1254. I can just uh, shoot a few rounds there and then just maybe vary it a little bit up and down. And if it's a super tall building, you know, I can just vary it a little bit more. But really just adding 
you know, a little bit more or less range and firing a bunch of shots is my best chance to, to hit the target. You can see with the inbuilt dispersion, you know, it's hard to just pinpoint the roof of the building. So again, I just need to fire, you know, a bunch of shots and eventually, eventually I'll get there. Um, and then, yeah, if I did have this, you know, set for a big building and then I shot my fire mission there and then I start shooting, you know, elsewhere and I don't delete this, which it's easy to forget to uh, delete and set it back to zero, then I could easily, you know, throw off my other shots. So anyway, that's all I uh, have for you guys today. If you have any questions, let me know.